Hundreds of women protesters converged on Benin City to protest against alleged police partiality in the run-up to the governorship election, demanding the release of detained supporters of PDP governorship candidate in the state. The women marched in their numbers through major roads within the Benin metropolis from King Square through Airport Road, carrying placards with various inscriptions to register their displeasure. The protesters made a stop at the Victor Waifo Creative Hub in Benin City, venue of the signing of the peace accord for the September the 21st governorship election. Women of Edo State, we are tired of suffering. Our husband is being arrested every day. Our children, they are victim of the police. So many people that is keeping peace in this Edo State has been arrested. They don't want free and free election. We want free and fair election. Following the expiration of the seven-day ultimatum given to the governor of Edo State to apologize to the Oba of Benin, a group known as Benin Nation embarked on a protest. They say the demonstration is to register their grievances against what they termed disrespect by the state governor towards the Oba of Benin. They say the governor should issue a public apology to the monarch. I've given the governor a one-week ultimatum to apologize to his majesty and the good people of Benin Kingdom for the kind of abysmal administration that he, he administered on the people and two, for the respect he did not show to the Bini custom and the Bini tradition. Sending people to instigating people to misbehave with palace of the upper of Bini is unacceptable. We are Bini women and we reject that. We need a strong apology from Governor Godwin Obaseki. All right, protests and counter protests in Edo State. But for more update on all of this, a member of the All Progressive Congress and former Commissioner of um, Information in Edo State. Andrew Amata joins me on the news. Good to have you join us. Yeah, thank you, Precious. Good evening and thanks for having me and good evening to our viewers at home. So let's begin with the refusal of the PDP to sign the peace accord because one of the allegations or the major allegation is that the, one of the umpires of that election, which is the security agencies, um, are already biased. That's the allegation that they are taking sides with your party already and so they're not sure of a free and fair election. How do you react to that? Yeah, thank you. I don't think uh, the statements credited to the governor that uh, until certain things are done, he would not. And I think the governor actually told the chairman of the National Peace uh, Committee, General Abu Salami Abubakar, former head of state, when he just stayed in the government house, that uh, he was not going to sign the agreement. And I think he's making the mistake He's not a candidate of the PDP, but Aswelime Igudalo, who was at the venue, but they actually bycotted himself and the state chairman of the PDP, they bycotted the process. You have about 16.2 parties, other side, with the exception of the PDP. And what is this peace accord? It simply is a commitment by political parties and their candidates that they are going to play according to the rules. And this includes you know, refraining from acts of violence, and showing that certain things are not done to derail the electoral process and at the end of the election to accept the outcome. So for PDP, the governor is just crying blue border. Remember, this was a governor who was supported in 2016 by Dr. Shomoli and others. He didn't complain, oh, that he should remove the commissioner of police. But this time around, he's trying to use the state vigilante to oppress opponents. Remember that the police only of the APC candidate was shot by persons dressed in this vigilante uniform. So we must quickly congratulate the Edo people on this ban by the Inspector General of Police on the activities of uh, Obaseki police. These persons, mm. they go around attacking people. They go around you know, doing things that are not in tandem with democratic practices. And again, using pump action instead of the normal uh, thing guns that vigilante should use is something that should give Every serious government at the federal level, serious mm. cost for And, and Mr. Avata, so that's, that's where I'm going, going next. Is ensuring um, that things are done according to the rules. Just a minute. First of all, let's clarify that the police has not um, made, given any report as to who shot who in that airport road um, incident. 
But let's also get into the issue you raised earlier about how the peace accord um, signifies that you're ready to play by the rules. And I'm asking you, is your party ready to play by the rules? Because it's still very fresh Certainly. in everyone's... Just that a minute. The, um, the incident which... The just accord. a minute. The incident of the police, you know, police officer who they have now said is a spy police officer have been openly bipartisan with, you know, in support of your party. It's still very fresh and it's still trending on social media. I think for that one, we, we have condemned it and I want to condemn that act because if you are a spy police officer, you are supposed to assist the police. You are not supposed to use that uniform as a tool for political engagement. So the party does not think what that particular party member did is right. He was acting on his own. He was on the frolic of his own. He was not instructed by the party to make the statements he made when the spy police office uniform. And the police have said they've arrested him. And we are saying the law should take its course. You know, we are not going to encourage what is wrong. The law requires everybody to play according to the rules. That's the rule of law and policy before the law. It does not matter whether the person is PVP or whether the person is APC. And just to quickly correct an impression you created, the person that was shot at the airport is a police officer. And the people responsible are agents of the government. And as we speak, some of these suspects are being housed in government house. The government is giving them cover using this immunity. But the truth is, Obasaki's immunity will end on the 12th of November this year. And we believe that the police will bring these people to justice. Mm. Uh, so again, I would want to dissociate from you know that allegation until the police um, you know releases an official report on that incident. Thank you so much for your time, a member of the All Progressives Congress and former Commissioner for Police in a Doe State, um, Andrea Mata. Commissioner of Information. Thank information. You. Thank it's you. A thank you. Now let's turn to other stories. Ahead of his tenth anniversary, the Nigerian Academy of Pharmacy. Is calling for partnership with the federal government for more impactful development of this sector. Executive members of the academy briefed journalists in Lagos today on critical matters affecting the pharmaceutical sector. Senior correspondent Jacqueline Ogwa reports. The Nigeria Academy of Pharmacists has as very top on its list of challenges the lack of regulations guiding the sector. That disturbing twist could not be hidden. Our emphasis is that anybody and everybody that has something to do with pharmaceutical business in Nigeria must be under regulatory control. That is our baseline. Be under regulatory control. And why are we saying that? The man on the street does not know the difference. Once you offer him the drug he takes. So the, the, the work that must be done should have been done before the drug is handed over to the patient. And that is what the pharmacy profession is very strong and uncompromising about. The pharmacist who applauded the president for the waiver of custom duty through an executive order say they have conceived a giant project, the Nigerian Academy of Pharmacy Innovation Center, which is to be a world-class research laboratory that will ensure drugs manufactured in Nigeria are safe. But the pharmacists say that cannot be achieved without the support of the government and well-meaning Nigerians. I said multi-billion because such a lab, what you expect, the structure and the equipment will be heavy in terms of financing today. But it's a necessity. There's no country that we grow without such laboratory service. A word of advice was also given to Nigerians who stopped taking the high brand drugs because they are no longer affordable. There are branded products that may be 50,000, 30,000, but there could be generic that does the job. That is 10,000. That is 5,000. That is why we always ask, speak to the pharmacist. He can recommend the alternative to you. Diseases are emerging globally. Tropical Africa is feeling the headache, no doubt. But the Nigeria Academy of Pharmacists say, with ceaseless collaboration with the government, the country can stand on safer lines. Jacqueline Ogo, TVC News, Lagos. The Chief of Army Staff has promised that the Army would continue to uphold the dignity of human rights of Nigerians. He said this Thursday at the third edition of the Nigerian Army Human Rights Seminar with a the theme, 
human rights and national security, a strategic balance. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano reports. In view of having a better civil military relations, it's become imperative to hold this seminar. The army says the seminar is another opportunity for those in the judiciary, media, civil society, representatives of local governments to review, advise the army with focus on exploring human rights. We believe that all our combat successes will come to naught if we lose out in the competition for the hearts and minds of the people. I call on everyone to freely and candidly express their views and we expect to live with reasonable takeaways. Special guest of honor, Honorable Justice Owade, retired and representative of Chief Justice of Lagos, described the seminar as timely. It is common with humans, the very institutions created to protect freedoms and rights occasionally end up violating the rights of citizens they were meant to protect. It is therefore gratifying that the army as an instrument of the state is striving, striving to find a strategic balance. The Anti-Torture Act resonates the global standards set by the Convention Against Torture as well as the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. There were paper presentations. In the attempt to be civil, the military has dropped their gaps by becoming peacemaker. In the process, we paid the supreme price. The counterinsurgency war had directly and indirectly killed 350,000 people. A significant amount of casualties was children younger than five years old. The panel sessions were moderated by on-air personalities. We don't have any business as a country militarizing the civic space. The reason why part of the problem that the Nigerian people have in their interaction with the military is the excessive presence of the military. You need to start understanding that the military, they're not exactly your enemy. It is government or the politicians or some people sitting down somewhere that are sending them to you to actually do the damage. The army said upholding human rights is a priority. Thank you. Ivy, Kano, TVC News.